Today is Saturday, October 24th, 2020, and today I'm thinking about how it seems like every time I look at the news or Reddit or whatever, there's some new thing that I see that they're saying is going on with the heavens. And also I have a quick thing that I want to say about time moving more quickly, but first I want to show this comment because it's just something that I've been thinking of every once in a while. Please, no flash photography. So here we go. I went to a party and there was this one room set up with strobe lights and heavy music. Entire room was decorated and had a nice energy to it. Girlfriend and I loved that room so much we decided to take a picture of it. She had the flash on. With the flash, it was just shitty glow lights taped to a fan and so normal looking. It ruined our vibe and we had to leave the room. And yeah, this reminds me of the type of feeling that you get when you actually see the objects in the firmament for the first time, or the heavens, uh, you'll notice that it's not all the flashy lights that you saw growing up. It's not the cartoon imagery. It's not the NASA stuff. And a lot of times, people's reaction when they actually see the objects in the heavens, they're like, whoa, that's it? <laughs> so that's kind of what we're talking about today. And I said that I was going to talk about something about time moving more quickly. And what it is for me is I've never been a night person. I have always been the kind of person where it's like 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and I'm exhausted and I just want to go to bed. But something that I've noticed is that it is so easy these days to stay up late. I used to be one of those people that it would be hard for me to stay up late. Like, it used to be difficult for me to stay up past 10 o'clock at night. And nowadays, it'll be 11 o'clock at night. And I'm like, where did the time go? How is it already 11 o'clock at night? I feel like it really shouldn't be as late as it is. And I feel like even though I'm tired, I think that that's something that everybody experiences these days because time is moving so quickly. Rest just isn't the same. I feel exhausted and yet I still somehow end up staying up past 10 o'clock, basically to 11 and beyond, all the time now. And that's not normal for me. And I think it has to do with time moving more quickly. Even if you're tired, it's still easy to stay up past, say, 11 o'clock at night. It's just not difficult. And some people who are just night people are going to be like, well, I've always stayed up past 11. I'm telling you that I didn't used to stay up late. And now it's so easy. Time just flies by and you look at the clock and you're like, dang, it's already 11 o'clock at night. And so that is kind of related to this idea of all the signs in the heavens. I didn't used to watch the sky that much, but nowadays I'm just always up during the middle of the night and I'll take a look outside and see all the stars moving and... One big thing that I've noticed recently is it seems like the wandering stars are so bright. What they call Mars has been incredibly bright, shining so brightly for a long while now. And same thing with other things. I just recently, somewhat recently, saw what they call Jupiter and what they say are Jupiter's moons. I don't believe in any of the NASA stuff. I don't know what it is. You know the the song that we sing to children? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. I don't think people really know. All that they can do is gather light and try to make their best guesses based off of the light that they get. And just if I had to throw an idea out there, I think a lot of the stars are like some sort of crystal. Remind me of crystal chandeliers flinging off their light. And the way that they shine and shimmer different colors. It reminds me of crystals, certain crystals, when light goes through them. Anyways, there are so many signs in the heavens, and I think a big one is how bright the wandering stars are these days. It seems like they're so much brighter than they ever used to be. Maybe it has something to do with the firmament coming down. And some stuff seems contradictory, because remember, the, the giant Betelgeuse star became really dim recently, and then I think it's becoming more bright again now. I don't know, but the point is, if you actually sit down and you look at the heavens and you watch what's going on, none of it mas matches NASA outer space land. And I think it's just, it's one of those things that we learn to just suspend our disbelief. 
things like we know that the stars don't move in the sky. We see the same constellations that everybody has ever seen, and the North Star always points north. But we know that in a chaotic, everything flying through three-dimensional world, the thing that they tell us about, NASA outer space land with balls and spinning and wobbling, we know that it could never happen that the stars stay in one place. And, I mean, just an, another thing about that, about how things haven't changed, even though they should change. The moon is the exact same size as the sun. And part of us knows that this didn't just randomly happen that way. And other other things too. Why we only see one side of the moon. Because that's all there is to see. And there is no other side. Where it's like looking through a microscope at an image. Look through a microscope. Go look at images of microscope images, binocular images. They look the exact same as the things that we see in the heaven. Okay, I thought this was interesting. Check your 2020 bingo card. Scientists are left baffled after discovering an expanding crack on the moon. So I guess this news is a little bit older. It, it seems about the same time as the rust. People recently have been talking about the moon rusting. They're talking about the moon getting big cracks in it. I did a little bit of research into this, and I guess in... In Islam, one of the signs of end times is is the moon cracking. And I guess in Islam, they claim that it's been cracked before in the past. And of course, I don't support Islam, but I guess it's worth pointing out. Discovery of strange crack expanding on moon's surface. And yeah, we same idea with, well, different idea, same, same object, the moon, rusting. And I don't remember ever hearing a bunch of stories like this when I was young. It kind of was just, outer space land was just kind of a thing going on. But you weren't hearing stories all the time about these big things going on. And so it just seems like things have been accelerating. And maybe they're coming out with these stories to try to hide just the really obvious stuff. Like, hey, why is that moon so bright that it's shining glare? It never used to do that. So instead of just talking about the obvious things that anybody can go see for themselves, they're talking about these obscure things. Oh, maybe it's rusting. Oh, there's a crack in it. And maybe it's just a distraction from the really obvious things like, hey, that is really, really bright. Hey, it doesn't look anything like a mountain in the distance. It looks like it's producing its own light. And other things, the moon being cold, etc., etc. Hmm... I thought this was crazy here. They're talking about, oh, NASA as it targets to land the first woman. They they just always have to play their agenda. They, they got to make it about the flavor of the week. Got to push this women empowerment, even though all you have to do is go look at NASA women to see that they're the men and that the people who claimed to go to the moon, the big phonies, are women pretending to be men. So... And of course, nobody has gone to the moon. You can't go to the moon. Nobody can pass the firmament. There's a reason that rocket launches look parabolic and they start going horizontal at really low altitudes. And nobody is in them. It's just a glorified bottle rocket. And they have to go horizontal. Otherwise, they would just smash into the firmament. And Earth Constant Companion, CC is 33. Constant Companion. And... It look at this typo, and it is only natural satellite. There should be no apostrophe there. And it's only natural satellite. The moon is the second brightest after the sun and the easiest celestial object visible in our sky. This is where people live. And it's crazy when you're awake to the charade, to the play production, the everybody's gonna just pretend that this thing is real, even though it's clearly not real. You can tell that people are taking the piss with this stuff, like going over the top. How crazy can I make this look? And anyways, what I wanted to show in this is, I guess, just another example of how we suspend our disbelief about things and they hide simple truths by making things seem overly complicated. And I liken it to, it's like, People don't even know that during the summer, the sun is high in the sky, and during the winter, the sun is low in the sky, and that the opposite is true of the moon. The moon is low in the sky during summer, and it's high in the sky during winter. They hide stuff like that from us because 
living in NASA outer space land, thinking of these things as space balls, thinking of things like orbital mechanics, none of this stuff clearly follows from that. And so they just want to hide the fact that there's a bunch of order here and things work the way that they do. And it's like clockwork because God made this place like the most magnificent clock ever built. And so things run in a way that makes sense. And it's not just random chaos, which is what NASA scientists would ha have you believe that, oh, it's totally all random and chaotic. Don't pay attention to the fact that the moon is the exact same size as the sun. Don't pay attention to the fact that we never see another side of, of the moon. And they want you to just believe that the randomness is just so perfectly random that all this stuff magically happens. And something I wanted to point out here, so of course they have to spread falsities like planets do not generate their own light, which is false. The moon is a light and the objects in the, in the heavens, they are lights. They produce their own light. The thing that you need to do is start, look at things that are reflected light, like mountains in the distance. If you're going on a drive and you're in a kind of flat area, but there's a mountain far in the distance, look at that mountain in the distance. Look at what it looks like. Does it look like it's shining at you? Because that is what the moon, theoretically, according to NASA land, the moon should be exactly like a mountain that's just really far away. But when you look at the moon, it's shining at you like a light, especially today. There's no excuses for people to not see that the moon produces its own light. It's not reflected light. And that should just be very common sense. But people suspend their disbelief. They they know that it doesn't look right, but they they still buy into the NASA fantasy land. And... Anyways, albedo is 21, which is triple seven, and that's 22 in Chaldean. Just one that I wanted to show here. So, orbital mechanics. Something that people don't understand is that even, even a three-body system, so that means a system with three... If you pretend that NASA land is true, and you build a system with three bodies with different gravities and different rotation or different orbits or whatever it's mathematically extremely complex these these systems with very few a, a three body problem is already extremely mathematically complex but nasa will just tell you the most outlandish things they'll tell you oh when we sent a satellite to one of jupiter's moons we slingshotted it around the moon it came back and slingshotted around earth it went around the sun five times and then it slingshotted off of mar they will just go out of control with the most ludicrous claims and it's all a bunch of bs they overcomplicate. and so what i wanted to show here is suppose that nasa land is true and that we have all these different planets on their different orbits. Well, the orbit of, of Jupiter should not know what the orbit of Earth is and be all synced up with it. And the orbit of Mars shouldn't be synced up with Earth. So why do we have stuff like this? Why are there specific months where we can see Saturn best? Because the months of Earth have to do with Earth's position. So what? why would that influence when we can see Saturn best? Wouldn't when we can see Saturn best be more, have more to do with where Saturn is with respect to the sun? So why is it Earth dependent when we can see Saturn? Oh, there's May, June, and July are the best months. Why is it always May, June, and July are the best months to see Saturn? And it's because it's Earth-centered. Every Earth is it. This is it. And all of those things that are in the heavens, they're for us. It's not this random chaos where Saturn doesn't even know that Earth exists and it's on doing its own thing on its own path. No, it's very Earth-centered. May, June, and July are when we can see Saturn, and it never changes. It's not like now it's May, June, and July, and 500 years ago there were different months. These things are very Earth-centered is just what I'm showing. And Mercury, April and May during the evening and October and November during the morning. Why is this Earth centered? Why, why does Mercury match up perfectly so that every year it's the same thing? April and May in the evening, October and November during the morning. 
if if we lived in chaotic NASA outer space land where everything had its own little orbital period, it wouldn't match up perfectly every year, the same months. Do you get what I'm getting at? So I, I'm going to finish up. Here's just some more anomalies. Why why would this be the case? If everything is is random chaos and everything has its own orbital period, why do things follow a pattern that never changes? Mars is located in direct opposition from the sun, which means when the sun rises, Mars sets and vice versa. If we lived in NASA outer space land, why would that be the case? Why would it always be the case that it works like this? And Mars sits close to the moon. There was something strange going on recently with Mars being so bright and it was like it was attached to the moon. It was like the moon was dragging Mars with it. Do you guys remember seeing that very recently? It's very strange. I don't ever remember seeing that growing up. And this is just another example. If NASA Outer Space Land was correct, there would be no reason for Mars to follow such a pattern over and over for all of time. It would be more random. Things would just be more random. But if you look at the heavens, and I, I think it's just one of those things that they want to overcomplicate it. If they make if they make it seem super complicated, you won't notice these patterns. And notice how they never teach stuff like this in, in school. They don't teach you really in school about how, how all this stuff works. Because oftentimes it's really, really simple and they follow a pattern. And instead of just telling you the pattern that it follows, they sell you this NASA outer space fantasy land and they say, well, you know, and they just draw a few cartoons to, to prove to you how it works. And a good example of that is the phases of the moon. They draw you these cartoons to show you how the phases of the moon work, rather than just tell you really simple things like the moon moves a little bit more slowly through the sky than the, than the sun does. And the fullness of the moon is directly proportional to how far it is from the sun in the sky. They don't teach you simple truths like that. They show you strange cartoons. Mars is better viewed with the naked eye, as it is rather small and disappointing when viewed through a telescope. I'm just going to end with this. I have kind of a funny story from growing up. I think it was Christmas or my birthday or something. My mom bought me a telescope, but it was like a really plastic. It was so plasticky, and it had, like, you needed to put batteries in it, and it had auto tracking features and stuff like that. And I never used that thing once because I just looked at it, and I was like, what the F is this? This isn't a telescope. What is this? This is like a piece of plastic from China. They're probably just showing me slides of things. And so I'm glad I didn't use it. That's probably exactly what it would do. I, I bet I could set that telescope up right underneath a tree and tell it to find Jupiter. And it would show me this like beautiful CGI image of, of Jupiter. And it's just kind of strange because this is more of a story about inverts and evil people. My mom's not an invert, but she's on the evil team. Recently, I was just FaceTiming with her once, and I guess my mom bought this huge uh, mirror telescope, like a really nice one, a legit telescope. And I just, I think it's so weird how she like FaceTimed me and she made sure that the telescope was in the background, like very prominent, because I think she wanted me to say something about it. But, of course, if I'm ever put in a situation like that, I go out of my way to make it look like I don't even notice it. And I just think it's, like, a really strange thing for my life that my mom bought me a really cheapo plastic fake telescope when I was young and has this really nice mirror one for herself now. And I think it's really weird that she, like, clearly tried to make me make a comment about it, but I'm like, I'm not going to even say anything. Anyways... I briefly mentioned earlier about how there's this, it's like that comment earlier, how people get wowed and amazed, but you take a photo and you're like, wait a minute, this isn't that impressive. And it's like that with the objects in, in the heavens. People have seen so many CGI images by the time they actually look through a, mi a microscope, a telescope, and look at the heavens, they can be underwhelmed. This is not what Mars looks like. It m looks more like this. And this is like the best image that we can get, really. When when they tell you that, oh, Hubble telescope takes this beautiful image. No, you're just looking at Photoshop. This is the best that you can get of things in the heavens. And it doesn't look like a space ball. See this? It's not a space ball. Saturn is probably the worst for in terms of 
it's hard to find real images of Saturn because it's almost always doctored up stuff out of NASA. And I've told this story before, but it is just really telling. On Reddit before, I've seen somebody make this post about how, oh, I bought all my gear, I got it all set up, I got my mount, look at this, this image that I took of Saturn. And it was a beautiful, real image of Saturn, which meant it was matte, orange colored, and it doesn't show that it's a space ball at all. It's flat. And what do you know, in the comments, there were a bunch of people going, oh, yeah, your image is okay, but it could be way better if, and then they start listing out all these programs where there's all these programs out there that they take your images and they mush them together and they basically turn your real images into NASA just space balls images. Even this is doctored. This is not what Saturn looks like. Even this is doctored. Oh, how could something shine so brightly that isn't producing its own light and is allegedly super, super far away from the light source? Strange. This is basically what people tell you NASA looks like and <laughs> Saturn looks like. Straight out of NASA. When this is what really, when you look at Saturn, it looks something like this. And this doesn't look anything like space balls. The reason that people are so into Saturn is because it's so strange. It looks like an eye. We know in Lord of the Rings, there's that eye of Sauron or whatever. And Saturn is Satan because there's something really strange about the wandering star Saturn and how it looks like an eye. It looks like an eye, not a space ball with rings around it. Does that look like space balls? Is this Spaceballs land? No. Study up on the inverse square law. Start to pay attention to how badly they're taking the piss on this stuff. Think about the light source. How could Jupiter be so lit up if the alleged only light source in NASA outer space land is tiny, tiny, tiny in the sky? But again, people are going to be misled here a little bit because people think that the entire Earth gets lit up by the sun. But that's not true. Read Genesis 1. Light existed before the sun. And so the sun is not what lights up the Earth. The sun is like a spotlight. How big would the sun look like on other planets, according to NASA? Well, there's an issue there. How could the light source for Jupiter be so tiny and yet light it up so bright? that we can see it on Earth with our naked eye according to NASA distances. And the thing is, is that it's just all BS. The Milky Way is 33 in Chaldean. I think that this whole NASA going to the moon hoax, I think that the Chaldeans have done this in the past. I think that this whole world deception has happened before. People that are in control, they're obsessed with this notion of guarding all the knowledge for themselves and just making everybody stupid. They, they want to guard all knowledge for themselves and feed everybody else a bunch of BS. And so I think that it's very telling that the Milky Way is 33 in Chaldean, which is a very old Gematria system. I think it's an old tale that has been told before. And yeah, they, they really take the piss these days. Yeah, how could something that is allegedly so far away, we get these super brightly lit things with Pluto the dog on it. It's a big joke.